So what we are going to one sec. So what we are going to, so a new computer and some settings needs to be refined. Um, so what we are going to, to speak today and to do today in this three hour is <coughs> going a little bit deeper on state mm, and components that we started to create last week. And then in the big lab one part B, mm, next week you are going to add the state and add some feature around the states in your uh, film library that you are developing in the lab. Mm. But today, again, we are going to, to speak about the state and we are going to start speaking about form as a way to manipulate such a state. Mm. We are not going to complete all the uh, discussion about the form, but we will at least start today. Mm. And then we are going to do an exercise on state and the beginning on forms. Mm. So to speak about state, we already uh, said a few things about state, the props. We said the props are passed from a components to the child of that component, uh, all, always uh, top to bottom, while the state could be exchanged in both direction. Um, and before introducing state, particularly how it can work with state, we need to introduce uh, something that is quite recent in uh, uh, React and that work that is for function components like the one that we are going to use, that we are using. Mm? And it are hooks. Mm? So hooks are a way to supercharge function components uh, because function components have some properties. We already have seen that. Mm? They are simple, you just need to write a function they are pure function. Get props and provide a render, mm, and that's it. They don't have state by default. They don't have state. So this is an issue because we have an object that is called state, but function components, differently from instance from a class component, doesn't have this concept of states. They need to be put in in another way, and this other way are, is hooks. Uh, they also don't have side effects because they are uh, function and they should be uh, pure, pure function. Mm? So again, um, in a functional uh, programming way. Uh, they don't have a life cycle without using by default again. And uh, they may define, however, handler function, but in absent state is not really useful to have another function called from the same function. Mm? So. These are the properties of uh, function components. And when function components were born, uh, actually most of the developer still used class components uh, that are a little bit more complex, but yet add those features like adding a state and handling a state. So why I should pick the, the simpler way if it's missing important feature in the language. So in 2018, uh, but stable since 2019, uh, the React development team created the hooks mm, as a way to add additional functions, additional features, additional functionality to function component, to bring function component at level with class components. Mm. So hooks are special mechanism for overcoming such limitation of function component in a controlled way. So in a way that React is able to control and act accordingly. And we have different hooks. We have one hooks for state, that's for sure, but we also have other hooks that adds feature to the function component mm, in a quite simple way. Mm. So these hooks uh, need are, are useful for managing state, but also accessing uh, external resources. Mm. Also having uh, 
side effect in a function component that shouldn't have a side effect. Mm -hmm. And hooks uh, in, in practice are special function that are called by function components. So we are going to add typically one line, import hooks in our file, and then add the one line to use, to declare this hook and use them. Mm -hmm. So uh, which are the most popular hooks? Mm -hmm. And then other developer can also create other hooks if they want. But these are the most popular hooks. And in the course, we are going to see for sure use state, that is today, for define a state variable in the functional component. Mm -hmm. uh, use effect later on in the course uh, to define side effect during a component life cycle, mm -hmm. during the creation, the structure, update of a functional component. Uh, so for instance, a side effect could be receiving information from a server that change the state of the, fun of the function component. And use context also, that uh, a context is another special variable in React mm, uh, that can be used for passing information around, a sort of, let's say in this way, global variable for the component that has some properties. And we're going to see also this uh, just after the state, so in a few weeks, mm, while use effect will be a little bit later in the course. And then there are other hooks, and, uh, and again, developers can also create other ones, but we are going to focus on the first three, mostly that are the most important and the most fundamental for a React application in general. And again, we are going to start with state, mm? so with the use state hook, mm? that as you can imagine is like a function, a use state uh, uh, as a function. Mm? So just a reminder, what is a state? We, we said that we have a component, this component uh, generate, uses a uh, element tree, and this element tree is made by the different child components that uh, they can have another element tree, et cetera, mm, until we reach the pure, mm, let's say, representation of the HTML element on, in an application. Mm. And we said, and we also tried last week to have some props passed to a component that they are passed to one or more of these children and then these children can also pass these props uh, to their own children, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And again, props are top to bottom. Mm -hmm. Then we have also context, that is this object that we're going to see uh, later on, that as you see, is still passed to component, and then there is this small arrow that go back from a component to the context, meaning that as properties, context can be passed top down, but in some cases could also be accessed the other way around. And what is more interesting today instead is state, that as you see from those arrows, state is passed to a component, and the component can manipulate the state. So it's not read-only, like a props, but also you can write mm, uh, the state. And then after the component, if you need to pass information after the component, you still need to use props. Mm. So state is an internal state of a single component, mm, defining the state of the component. Mm. And as we exemplified last week, the state could be uh, maybe the language of a button of a component. Mm? So changing the language will re-render the component. Mm. It could be some data that you memorize mm, in the components because you need to read, to manipulate, to edit, to add, to delete some data. It's the internal state of a component. Mm? There can be read and written. And remember that state, um, that state, let me try to close this window. Um, the state can uh, generate a re-rendering of a component always. So every time you change the state, every time you change the state, 
in a components that components re-render itself. So it's also a way to change information that are displayed in a component. Now imagine your film library or imagine our example with exams. Every time when we want to re-render the component. Let's pick the example of the exam. We have the table. When we want to change to re-render the table, which operation should re-render the table on screen? When we delete an exam, for sure. When we add, one is missing. When we modify. So every operation, adding, updating, deleting, will typically re-render the, the components. And if we have this information, our exams, in a state, every time we modify the state, the component is automatically re-rendered. So we obtain, we manipulate the state, and we obtain the results on screen as desired. React is taking care of this. So it's, it's an important component. And it's an important feature of, of a component, the state. Mm -hmm. So just to, to, again, recap what we said uh, also last week, props are immutable piece of data that are passed from a parent component to a child. Uh, state is where components hold the data locally into the component. Mm -hmm. And again, when the state change, the components re-render itself. And notice that the state is private to the component. Mm -hmm. So each component can have its own state that's not shared with others. Mm -hmm. And it's mutable, it's changeable only from inside the component. Mm -hmm. So your state will apply a state to that component and will allow you to manipulate the state of that component. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, context we were going to see it later, as I was mentioning, is a sort of global and implicit props that are automatically passed to all the interested components. Mm -hmm. So context could be used useful, for instance, um, for setting a language for an entire application. Mm -hmm. Instead of passing a props from the, the main component, the, the parent component, to all this child, just saying, okay, it's Italian, it's English, it's uh, French, it's whatever, you just have a context that set the, the, that has the language and all the components read that, that global variable and is able to, to know which language they should, uh, they should have. Mm -hmm. So that is one, one case in which a context could be useful as an object. But again, let's focus on state uh, mostly. Um, well, we already have seen props mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. So we have attributes in JSX that are passed as props, mm, and they could be also JavaScript objects or other React elements. That shouldn't be anything really uh, new. Uh, a state is then defined with the use state hook. Mm. So what if you want to add, let's imagine to have this component is called short text, that what is done, that show a longer or a shorter version of a text mm, when clicked on a link. Mm. So when you click on more, you see more. When you click on less, you'll see less text. Mm. Uh, so here, there is the definition of your state. Mm. You see the uh, signature, the way of defining. We have a sort of an array with two objects in it, equal you state as a function with a parameter, in an argument in the function. What is uh, doing this declaration? This declaration, in this case, is creating a state variable called hidden, and it's initializing hidden with true. So the elements in the parentheses is the initializer for the first time to the state. So the first thing that this line is doing is creating a variable hidden to be used as state and putting true in that variable. 
And this is for reading the variable. If we need to access it, then we can read it, because we have, from that moment on, we have a variable that's called hidden. So if, we're not, if we need to do some operation with hidden, we can just use it, like a normal variable. The difference with a normal variable is that we shouldn't say in the code of the component, hidden equal false. But for editing the state, for changing the state, we must use uh, the second element in this array that is set hidden. That is the way for updating the state. So when you create a state, you, you state, you have to define two uh, elements. One is the name of the state, and the other one is typically called set the name of the state. Hmm? So hidden set hidden, uh, exam set exams, movies set movies. Hmm? It's, it's not mandatory, but it's by convention that in React you're doing this. But you still have two. The first one is the variable that holds the state. It's the state hmm? to, be read, to be read. And the second one is the function to manipulate the state. And then if you want, in the parentheses of the use state in, as an argument, as the only argument, you can pass the value, the initial value of the state hmm, that will be put in hidden. So after this line that you see is not in the return, it's just called in the function. The return is where you have the rendering part. That is what we have done up to now. Hmm. So this is code. This is JavaScript code. You can also have other code here. Uh, in the return, in this case, you use hidden for reading, and you use set hidden as false as true to set a new value of hidden. Hmm? So clearly, this true, hmm, in this case, this true is a simple object, typically is a simple object, a simple value, but it can be also an object, a more complex object. So you can have a state that contains a dictionary hmm, or an array. Hmm. Is it possible? Um, and so everything is clear up to now. Hmm, because we are making things a little bit more complex now. OK. So. I told you that we, for updating the state, we need to use set whatever, set x, where x is the name of the state, uh, and pass a value. And this is true. It's not that it's false. But there is also another way to update the state. Always using set x, set hidden, set exam, set whatever you want. Mm? But not passing a new value on it but passing a callback function to it. Mm? So the definition of, of each state is always this way. And you can have also multiple states in a component. Mm? You can have the hidden state, but you can also have the name state, mm? all defined there. So const hidden set hidden use state, const name set name use state. You can have multiple states. Uh, also, you often will have probably multiple states. Not too much, but uh, a few, it, hap it would happen. Hmm? Uh, the first one is uh, the hidden, in this case is for reading, set x is for editing, and you can update the state either passing a variable or passing a callback to that set uh, x. Uh, notice that, I was looking if I missed something from here, notice that the set x function will replace the current state with the new one. So if we have it done true in a state, set x will replace true with, with another value, let's say false. 
So we will forget the previous state. It's a full replacement. It's not adding to a state. It's just a replacing the state. Hmm? And every time you replace the state, what happens? A re-rendering is starting. Hmm? So every time you do set x in a state, the components try to render itself. Hmm? That is the, the behavior we expect with state. But keep this in mind, set x, hmm, set hidden in our example of before, we replace the state totally. Hmm? This is again to stress one more thing that all the modification to the state must be requested to set x, set variable, new value. Never ever modify the state variable directly. You have a variable, so you can write it then equals something. You can, because it's, it's, it's like JavaScript, but you shouldn't. Hmm? So you always have to modify the state variable through set x, hmm? set whatever it is called. Uh, and keep in mind also this, that set variable, set state, set x, uh, will apply the modification, just to make things more interesting, asynchronously. So when you replace the state, it's not synchronously a change of state that will render. It will happen asynchronously. So as we, as we said uh, in the past, after a certain amount of time, that we don't know. Hmm? So if it's a change like true and false, it will be almost immediate. Not a big deal. But yet, it's not synchronous. It's asynchronous. So at a certain point, that state will be updated. Hmm? Uh, and I told you that we have two ways of updating the state. The first one is the one that we have seen in the first example, with a new value. Set hidden false. Replace the content of the state hidden with the value false instead of true. And should have clearly the same type of the initial value of the previous value contained in the state. So in the state it was a Boolean, that should be a Boolean. If in the state it was a number, that should be a number. Uh, not because it's requested by the function, but because it's needed for rendering. Because if you are rendering something as a Boolean or as a date, and then you change the content on the state, that will be still rendered as a Boolean. We'll be try React to render it as a Boolean or as a date. And so we generate random things in some cases. Mm -hmm. Because it expects maybe a true and receive a hello. And so what happens in the rendering, in the function that is rendering? And you can also replace the state with a function. Uh, in which in this function, the nice thing is that in this function you have, in the callback function, you have the old state as a parameter. So why in the first one you just replace whatever is in the state and you don't know what, that, what is in the state? So in the case of a Boolean, you can guess that it is either true or false. Because actually there are two values but you don't know exactly which of the two. With the callback, you can have access to the current state before changing it. So you can, for instance, verify something on the old state before doing the change. So you have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, and you are, it's better to use that version with a function when the new state depend on the old state. So when you don't care about the previous state, you can replace it. But when the new states depend on the value of the current state, you have to use this one. Hmm? Uh, so if we have to, again, in our example with the exam, if we have to add an exam, hmm, and we have all the exams in a state, which one we are going to use, function or variable? Yes, state loader.
which one? Function. Because if we need to add an exam to something that is already in the state, we are depending on the old state in a way. Because in the old state, we have three exams, and we are going to add a fourth one. And in particular, we just know the exam that we were adding mm, because in the, the previous one was in state. So if we use the value there, we don't have access to the previous state. We, we don't know, for instance, if that exam is already in the state and we're trying to add it twice. We don't know. Mm. We need to check before. Here, instead, we have everything in the callback. So we can also do some other che additional checking and adapt the state, the new state, mm, in, in some more, let's say, in a smart way, because we can access to the previous state. Mm. Uh, but also in this case, the function will return the entire new state. So even if we have access to the previous state, the set x will replace entirely the state as for the value. Mm? The key difference is that in the first one, in the value version, we just have the element, the new element to pass. Here, we can have access to the previous state. Mm? Uh, so in any case, we must return a new state, an entire state, and we must not mutate the state. We cannot say add an exam. So we have, uh, let's say, exams. We cannot say exam.push to add a new uh, exam to that because we are mutating the current state. We need to have a copy and add it to that copy so that it's a return. Uh, here there's another example. So let's imagine that you want to count steps. So it's incremental. So every time you set a new step, you increment by one. So here there is a strong dependency from the current state. Mm, because if the current state is five, you want to put it six. Uh, if it's one, you want to put it two. So you cannot guess which is the current value. Here you have and you can use it. Mm. So two ways to set the state. Um, and here there is, uh, again, what we, uh, yes. If you need to read uh, just for printing it, you need to read steps. Okay. The function is just for updating. Mm -hmm. So everything that is this old step here is just needed to the callback if the callback needs to create a new state. Mm -hmm. But here, remember, this is happening, this is happening asynchronously. So if you need to read it for printing the number of steps on screen uh, outside of this function so that it's synchronous and it can be rendered immediately. Here just for changing the state, okay? So this is equivalent to the other one in that perspective. Every time you need to change the state, you can pick one over the other. If you need to read it, you can read it in any moment. It's the same, just for changing the state. So uh, I already said that, but again, to, to highlight this again, uh, if the logic of computing the new state depends on the current state, always use the callback of set x, set state. Mm -hmm. uh, and here there is the detail of why this statement. Mm -hmm. Because if we need to increase counter steps as before, uh, and we do it in the first way. Uh, we can access counter. It's a variable. We can access a variable from a, var from a function. Mm. Uh, the point is that the counter is evaluated when set counter is called in the first case, but the new state will be assigned later asynchronously. So in some cases, 
some update in doing things in this way may rely on out of date information because that counter is changed in another moment. So here, for instance, you are adding one to a very, very old state with respect to the moment in which this will be actually changed and visualized on screen. So is it possible to access a state with the passing value? But there is this problem that that is evaluated when it's called, but the update is happening later. And so that value, the value of, of counter could be, since we don't know how later mm, it will be called, it could be evaluated, could be out of date. Mm. The other way will instead prevent this uh, behavior mm, uh, because that, uh, the the error function will be evaluated when the call is made and with the current up-to-date value of count, CMT. So in the second case here, we have the guarantee that that CMT is the latest available value possible. Here, we don't have this guarantee. We don't know, we cannot know. So maybe we're lucky and it works, maybe we're not. And since we cannot rely on luckiness, we, we and also the React development team create this second version of set state mm, to be sure that if we need to manipulate state to create a new state, we have the latest update version possible. Mm. So again, when you have to, to change the state and the new state depends on the previous one or the current one, always use this for this reason. Mm. Otherwise, if you need to replace true, false, etc just go with true false with the first one adopted. So how do you call state change? So state change, you typically call state change through, um, through events mm, on click. When I click on something, I change the state. Imagine the delete of an exam. When I click on the delete button, I, I change the content of the variable, but the events is driven by the person that in that moment is using the application. Mm -hmm. So it's at a certain point, a delete event, a on-click event will arrive and that state will be changed. Mm -hmm. So what we, what is done in React, for instance, in this example, you have the on-click handler for the click event, uh, and you can pass it a function, toggle language. This function is defined just before the, re the return, the rendering part, and will change the state in this case. Set English will change the state and it used the uh, arrow function, the callback, because it wants just to toggle the language. So if it's English, um, it will put it not in English or vice versa. Just have two states in this example. English true, English false. Whatever is English false, clearly. Mm -hmm. And notice how this is called is just the name of the function. There are no parentheses. This is, this is the event handler that we had with the DOM also. But it does not, why it doesn't, it doesn't have parentheses here? If we put parentheses here, is a syntax error or not? Putting parentheses here. It's not a syntax error. It's, it's, it's valid, this is, I can call it a function. I mean, no, in a callback, I can call a function. Why not? What's the problem if I put their parentheses? That is the problem. 
So it's not a syntax error because I can put parentheses here and everything compile and everything work. The problem is that if this is a function with parentheses, that will be executed when this line is processed and not when the person click on the button. So that's why we don't have parentheses because this needs to be executed only when we have the on-click event. Hmm? Uh, and this is a quite common error when writing JavaScript code. Oh, you have a function, let's add parentheses. No, not here. If it's an event handler, no parentheses. Hmm? Because you need to call it when you, uh, when the person in this case click on the button or when the event is triggered, whatever is the event. And you can either define the function separately, if it's something that you are going to reuse, or often you just put it as another function inside. Don't click the event handler. So immediately define the function in that way. Not calling it, but just defining in that way. So instead of saying call tangle language, call this anonymous function. If you just need to use it once. So often you do this because you just, just need to do that operation once in that moment. So the default value instead, uh, we, in the examples, we always had use state open parenthesis something that is the default value, the initial value of the state. And that is used during the first rendering of the component only. So when a component is created and rendered the first time, that is the value of the state. After that moment, it's not used anymore in any successive rendering. Uh, it could be a value like in our case with true and false or hidden, or could also be a function that compute a value. And it may be computed also from props. So instead of, of writing true, you can write props dot something where this something is defined to the parent component. And so it's passed through from the parent to the child. Uh, but these, uh, will give you often a false sense of security uh, because you see a variable and say, okay, if, if the props change, also this will change, uh, but this not. Mm -hmm. uh, because it will be not be updated if the props change. It's just used to create the component the first time. So if the prop change, that will continue to have the previous, the original value of the props when the component was created. So it's actually not recommended to, uh, com to, to initialize the state with something from a props mm -hmm. for this reason, because the props can change and that value will not. Mm -hmm. So you maybe will change the props and you will expect to see a change also in the rendering of the components because you put the props in the state, but you will not because you, you are actually putting the components a previous version of the prop, not the current one. So that could create bugs, especially if you use the state, not just for rendering, but for some conditional execution. If this is, if the state is this, then do that. So we, we are going to see how to, to manipulate the, the, how to initialize the state, but right now, let's try to initialize the state with a stable value, true, false, one, something that is a value, a real value, not something that depends on a variable or on a props. And here there is the example with the props. Just to say it's possible, but try to avoid it, it's possible. Uh, well, as I told you, you can also have multiple states in a component. And so here you have three states, one hidden, one count, one mode. And each, each of them contains a different kind of state. The first one is a Boolean, the second is a number, and the third is a string. And notice that each of them has the name of the state set 
the nameless state. So hidden set hidden, count set count, and mode set mode. So you can create many state variables as you want, as you need, and they are all independent one from another. So in some cases, it's better to have multiple states instead of one big state with a complex object in it. Since they are independent, it's also easier to manage smaller states if you need to, to update them, for instance, or add something to the state. And don't forget the components, in any case, will re-render if any of the state will change in any order. Hmm? While children components will re-render only if their props will change, not if the state of the parent change. So, let me go back to, to that after. Uh, so, as a suggestion, hmm, uh, you state when you need that. Hmm? So, components can have state, but it's not mandatory that all components have state. Hmm? So, if a component needs state, add it. If a component doesn't need it, it's fine, it doesn't have. Mm? Uh, also, stateless components without states are actually more uh, reusable, are faster to execute by React, and can be declared as full function, mm? because they don't have these hooks. So when possible, decide whether to use state, you will need to use state, but again, not all components need state. Uh, when it's possible, uh, move state to the common ancestor. Mm? And if you need to pass a state down to the children, pass it as a props. If a children needs to know the state, you can pass it as a props. And the children will see it as a props. And this is also a good effect because if you change the state, you pass a new props to the children, so also the children will be rendered because it will receive a new props. And if you want that a child can update the state, it's possible. I have a child of my components that need to update my state, the state of the ancestor where there is a state. You can do it by passing down a callback. So the father can pass, uh, the parent can pass a callback to the child, or to the, ch to, or to the child of the child, hmm, uh, around the, the chain, as a props. And when that callback is called, the state in the father, in the parent, in the ancestor, will be updated. Hmm. And here, hmm, there is an example of that last uh, statement that I did. So imagine to have this one, you have four buttons. And each button will be selected or not, but only one can be selected at a specific moment in time. And the information about which button is selected, so is selected chess or poker or go, uh, may not be inside the button component. Hmm? So the button cannot know if he, he, it is selected or not. Hmm? Uh, but instead, you can have a state in the main component that is button group. Hmm? So you have a component, button group, with the state of which button is selected, and you have four buttons in it. Each one knowing what to do when pressed, but each one not knowing if another one is selected or not. And here, you can only have one button selected at a time. So you will have something like this, probably. Hmm? Uh, you have probably up hmm, that has four names that are the names of the button in a props that are passed to the button group. Uh, the group has a state that is selected or not, true and false, or 
uh, yeah, true and false. And also, you can have other props passed to the button, to the for button, like the name, the index, it's button number one, button number two, three, and four, and whether it's selected or not. But this information is decided by the button group. So with this information, you can render something like this. You pass one, you pass selected true at the first button, chess, and chess know that if it's selected, if you receive a prop that is selected, it can change the color in blue instead of black or gray, whatever it is. So how can it change the button that is cho chosen? Because if I click, I click, so if I, say, I click on poker, I need to say that poker is selected. So button with the index two is selected. But this state is in the button group, not in the in poker. So I have an event on poker, but I have on state in its father, in its parent. And I cannot just say, okay, poker, you're pressed, you're selected. Because if I just say that this is selected, in this case, what will I have? I will have the first button selected, the second button selected, the third and the third button not selected. And this violate uh, the constraint that we have said before, that just one button at a time can be selected. Hmm? So here the problem is that state is shared between all the four buttons. Uh, so we need a way to to have this single button to change the state so that the props can be changed and passed through the four children. And how we can do that? We can handle the on-click events on the button as we can do in any case. And the button group must offer a method for changing which is the chosen button. And we can call it set selected. And the method reference, this callback, must be passed down as a props to the button. So that the button in the on click, as before with toggle language, in the on click, we can call it set selected me. And then the father, the parent, will know that two is becoming selected and can update the information for everybody else, including the button that's selected. So you see here, you have a new props that is chosen, choose that as a props that's called choose button. This choose button is a function defined in the button group that called uh, set selected. Hmm? And when you have on click on all, every single button, we'll have an on click that we call this choose button with the index of the button. Hmm? And so here, in button group, we have set selected two, and in that moment, if set selected, inside set selected, huh? it can do, okay, if set selected is two, then we need to pass here, index one, and set selected false, here, index two, and set selected true, in this case, so changing which props is passed through the button below. Hmm? So since state is not passed through the, to the children, if we need to manipulate the state from a children, we need to have a props, a function that manipulates the state, define where the state is, otherwise we cannot manipulate it, and pass it as a props so that when we need to change the state from one of its children, we can have this method in the, pro in the props. So this is exactly like this one the toggle language, with the difference that here we were just inside one component. In the, the other case, we need to pass this toggle language as a props to the children, if we need that the children can change, in this case, the language or the selected for other things. Okay? Okay, so before, uh, 
uh, moving to uh, to the forms, let me just tell you these uh, uh, as a preview, and then we will go back in a moment. But we have seen on click mm, as a way to handle the click events. And uh, React, uh, what it does for events, React uh, define its own set of events that are called synthetic events that are mapped, we'll say, with the events that are defined by the DOM. Mm? So all the events in the DOM are eventually mapped here in some cases, in some way. But the key difference here is that, well, it's defined at the React level events, and they are defined in a uniform way. Mm? So you will have on click that act, you can write, you can call it handle on click exactly as you handle all the others. So they are uniform. Mm? And you can have, again, all the events you can imagine. So we have on click, you have on focus, on blur, on key press, uh, on submit, uh, on, maze down, on mouse down, on select, it's always on and the event that is synth synthetic mm, for React. So we wrote on click and then passed a function, a reference to function, uh, but we can also have written on key press or on copy if we want to intercept the event on copying and paste, on copy, on paste from the, uh, from the clipboard. Etc. So these are a series of synthetic events that React put at, uh, as availability in a uniform way and that abstract the events available in the DOM. So under the hood, all of these will going to intercept the events in the browser like you, you were going to, to do manipulating the DOM. But it's doing it a little bit higher level with a little bit more control and uniformity. So this is just since we mentioned uh, the on click. And these are in the slides about the form, so we are going to, to see them in a moment. So let's uh, uh, try to add the state to our um, exam, um, exercise, uh, exam example. So first, of, first, before defining the state, let's oh, let's run it. Um, so this is in the week seven folder on GitHub, on the repository on GitHub, but it's actually identical to the things that we developed uh, last week. So it's just a copy and paste of that version without no change. Uh, so let me start it. No, let me install everything before. And then let me start it. Just to see if everything is working, yes. So this is what we did last time. Nothing more. Hmm? Okay. Oh, one notice. Uh, we brought here NPM start. Right? We run the application with npm start. What is the start? Is the same thing as install, remove, init, or is something different to you? So we write npm install to install things. And this is a, a command of npm. And we write npm remove to remove things. And this is a command of npm. And we've also brought npm init to create a project with a package.json and still this is a command of npm. Start, npm start. Start is a command of npm like the others or not. Yes, no, maybe. To you, your opinion. Uh, 
Anyone? No idea ever? No guess? It triggers an event probably, uh, but independent on what we, it, it does, it's something, so if we have, if we took um, the project that we did two weeks ago before React, in which we brought npm init and npm install, why we run that with uh, node name of the file and not npm start? No, not, yeah, start a server, but in this case, um, but this is how it works, it, because of browsers, because it's how this works. Um, so this is not a command of NPM like the other. That's why we don't write NPM start, independently of the behavior of NPM start. NPM start, if you open the package.json, is under the sections called script. Mm -hmm. So React define a script that is called start. That's a shortcut start. Mm -hmm. Also build, test, and eject, but, mm -hmm. and when you write npm start, uh, npm is doing two things. First is looking if start is one of its own command and it's not, like install, init, ins, uh, delete, remove, and it's not. Then looks here in the package.json, if there is a script that answer to start, and with React, it find him. And this start, when you write npm start, is like writing react minus scripts start. That is a feature, a command, that React put make available for the project. But this is a script, it's defined for this project. So if you go here and instead of start, write something else, then you can write npm this something else because this is defined per project. So in this case, start behaving that way. We could have created a script three weeks ago with Node.js called start that would have done node space name of the file and we could have written npm start because we created the shortcut to launch the application. Mm -hmm. So these are a section in uh, package.json that define project defined scripts that they can be either from a template like this or defined also by you if you want. It's just the instruction that you're going to write there. It's a shortcut to launch a command. Mm -hmm. Then everything else is then you have the dependencies like, like before in the other. Mm -hmm. But just the script section is the scripts. Shortcut for longer commands. Mm -hmm. So React in the template provide this shortcut. And so that's why we write npm start and not React minus script start or whatever we need to, to write. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is just. Uh, so, before doing the, the state, let's change one thing to our application. Two things. Um, as a, uh, an exercise for components. Uh, I would like to do two things. The first one is adding the exam code to the table. It's missing. We have the exam code. We have the code with the name, the score, the date, but it's not uh, displayed, the exam code. And the other one, the other things that we like to do is put maybe here in parentheses, the number of exams that we have in the table. Mm -hmm. So that it motivates why we have the, the exam list in app.js mm -hmm. and not inside the table so that we can use it, that information also in other part of the page. So this is a very simple page, but let's use it at least twice. So code, how can we add code to this table? 
what we need to do, where we need to go. I need to add a column that's called code. Modify the exam row component. That is, where is? Inside the exam score, set inside the exam component file. Uh, exam row, you're saying. So exam row calls exam data and exam action, which one we are need to, to change? Data, that is this one. So what we need to do? Exactly. And we can write props.exam.code. And we can save. And also, in the exam table, in the either, because otherwise we, we added the code, but now the code is name, the score is the name of the exam, so we shifted everything. Because here in the table head, we need also have to, an header here for code. Okay, good. Now, the, the number of exams written here. My exams, open parenthesis, three in this case. Where I'm going to put this three? Or whatever it is that generates the three? In app.js, we have two files. In app.js, in the H1, that is the title, and we said the other, the last time that this could have been a component, if we want, another file, if we want to reuse it. And here, what we're going to write, Fake exams dot length. This way? With a curly brackets. Because otherwise it's text. Uh, if we do this, we see like text. So not an error, but it's not really what we wanted. So we need to tell React that this is JavaScript code. It needs to be interpreted as JavaScript. And here we are. We have three exams in the table, and we have three as a number. And we can also, instead of three, we could have put the average, for instance, of the score. A other com calculation, but it, it's the same. It's just a number. Okay, so we have updated the table. The state. Now, which components of the many that we have, app, exam score, exam table, exam row, exam data, exam action, and probably stop, hold the state. So first of all, what is the state here? Which is the state of this application that we want to store? I told you before, but the exams list with all the details, the exams. This is what we want to put in the state. Now, the question is where? Where do we, we, we need to put it? In which component we need to add the, the state? App, exam score, exam table, exam data, exam action. Why up? We need to read? 
Yes. Um, what happens if we put state in exam score? We have just a starting length. So if we change something in the state, that number will always be three because that, that will be just this variable here. Mm -hmm. So in this case, mm -hmm. given that we need the state in multiple chil child children, the best place to put a state is up. If we didn't have this length, if we didn't add this parenthesis now, so let's imagine that we don't have it, and we don't want to have it. Where we are going to put the state? Still in up or somewhere else? Exam table, so here. If we don't have here, you will put it. Exam score. Anybody else? They are good option, both. So who say that without that, without this number here, who say that exam table or exam scores, they are really, really close each other, is a good option? Okay, and all the others? The vast majority of you that didn't like exam scores or exam table, where do you put it? Yeah, that is one of the options that we already considered. Exam table or exam score? Uh, no, for sure not in exam role. Uh, because we need here to do these operations, we need to pass the key of score. So if we need to move down from the app, exam table or exam scores are good place to put it. Probably better exam table just because exam score is just call it exam, exam table, not doing a lot instead of exam table is as this map, as this code, as a little bit more need. Uh, exam row wa wants the single exam. So we need to put it uh, at least on a higher level. Um, why, if I, and, and this is a possibility, it's not, it's not wrong. Uh, what is the drawback of this? I would have put it in up, still, even if we don't, we don't need the, um, the, the number in, in the title. This is not wrong, but there is one drawback of putting the state here. Uh, yeah, yes, if you have more components, you need to move it again. But let's imagine that this is the best uh, website ever and nobody will change it for no, no reason. Um, and also the exam scores are always just in front of the exam table so they should not be changed. Yeah, but it's, it's what we need, no? Exam table is this, essentially. But if we don't uh, need this number. But when we need the exam scores. We not, we are not going to change anything. It's is stable, is the final version of everything. And this fictional example is stable. So it, it's a good, it's a possible place to put it. It's not wrong to put it in exam table or, or exam score, probably exam table. But it has one drawback in our current code to put them there. We need, if you put the state here, in exam table, let's say, we need to initialize them through the props. Passing a props. 
to exam score, and then passing the props from exam score to exam table, and then creating the state. That is something that I told you it's better not to do, right? So that is the single drawback. It's not, it's not wrong, but there's this drawback that you are going to initialize the state with the props. Uh, so in reality, uh, you don't have just one page with one component, so you have multiple components accessing to the state. So app, in this case, is a good place because for two reasons, because multiple components need to access that state in this case. Mm -hmm. But in any case, the upper component that needs to have access, mm -hmm. so if you have a state that is needed to one component and its children, it's better to put it in the parent of that component. So maybe it's not up, but the upper components that you have for creating that state. In this case, is up. And uh, in this case, is up also because we have this here. Mm, so last time, someone someone say, why do we have this here? We can have this in exam table, right? If we don't need in the app, we can also create these things in exam table. And this will resolve also this drawback because we are moving this to the exam table. Uh, this is here for one reason that that is that at a certain point we will have, well, last time for exercising with props, but also because at a certain time, at a certain point, we will have a server and we will get this information from a database. And that server will be 99% probably uh, queried from here. So we, we will have here the state, the information to fill the state coming from a server. Mm -hmm. So that's why fake exam is actually here because it's, it's an app that we are going to probably open the connection to the server and get the main information to render the page. Mm -hmm. but so also, in this case, we have two components and both of them will need the information from the exam. Mm -hmm. So we can create here the state. So how we can create the state? Do you remember? What I'm going to write? Sorry? Oh, yes, import. First of all, import. Import use state from React. And then, And then, const, uh, how we call it, exams, set exams, equal use state of fake exams. And now we need to change everything to use this state and not exam, not fake exams. So here, fake exams dot length will became just exams. And here we are going to pass exams as a props to the children. to the child in this in this moment. Hmm? And here we don't have to change anything because we already received the exam as a props. So here everything should work. Let's try. So simple change, nothing happened. Now let's use state Let's use the state we created for real. Let's implement the delete. The delete that is a button in exam action that is inside exam row, that is inside exam table, that is inside exam score, that is contained in app, where the state is. 
So we need that child of the child of the child of the child manipulating the state through all the chain, okay? So, uh -huh. first of all, where we are going to create this method for deleting an exam? In app.js, exactly, because it's where we have the state and where we have set exams, actually. So here we can write const delete exam as an arrow function and which exam we want to delete according to which, how we know which exam to delete. Which is the argument of this function? Exam is too much. Sorry? The ID, which is the ID of the exam? The code. So let's call it course code, just to use a different name, the code that we have. Good. Now what we're going to write here, set exam, because that is the way to change an exam. And what we're going to do? Um, we can do it inside the parentheses, a copy. We need to return a new, the new state, the entire new state. Um, but here we're going to use the value, the way or the function, the callback way. Callback. The callback because we're going to, to depend on the current state. We are going to manipulate the current state. Hmm? So exams, uh, and then we can have an arrow function, uh, also without parentheses actually. And we can use filter. That is already a functional method that will give us a new array. Hmm? So it, it works and we can say that exam, uh, let's say exam code, filter exam code different from course code. So we keep everything that is with a different course code than the one that we passed, so all the others. Okay, and we filters give us a new, returns the elements of an array in a called uh, the admitted condition. So we give us a new array. And so we are changing or replacing the entire state as we want. Now, we have the delete here, but we need it uh, here, essentially. Line 51 of exam components. And we have the function in line 17 of app.js. How we can move it down? What do we need to do? We pass it as a props of exam scores, etc. Hmm? So here we can write delete exam equal curly brackets. Uh, we call it a delete exam without parentheses, just the reference to the function. So here in exam components, exam scores will receive a props that is delete and need to pass it to the children. Delete exam equal props dot delete exam. And these need to be passed through exam table 
and in particular needs to be passed to the uh, exam row. Mm -hmm. Because we, we are going to delete a single exam, not all the exams, right? Mm -hmm. So here we can have delete exams. And then pass it to exam data, no, passing to exam actions, because it's there that we have the button. Right? And now that we have it in exam actions, what are we going to write here? On click, because it's a simple button, so we can click it and write uh, uh, props dot delete exam, and here we need to pass it the uh, props dot exam dot And we need to add props here. And we need to pass the exams also. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we don't have the, the code for deleting the exam because it's in another component. Okay, so in theory, and then we can have a break in any case, either if it's working or not. In theory it's not. Also in practice it's not. Am I recalling that the on click uh, handler is like a repeat of the other parentheses? In other words, like passing also the props as an action? Yes. Yes, we need to do this. Otherwise, it's executed in that moment. So as soon as created, it's also deleted. That's right. But notice this error. Maybe you, you don't see it, but before refreshing this page, uh, this is a, a, a nice error. Not really understandable, but uh, it's a cannot update a component up while rendering a different component exam action. So why this error? Because when we created exam action, we deleted it, the row, and that deletion will update the state of up. So we were both trying to re-render up three times and also rendering and change things on exam action. So too many rendering going in parallel on different components. And this will generate this error. Uh, you will have to render one component at a time. If the rendering up, nothing else should be rendered. So in theory, we solve that, yes. So now if we press this, we delete a button, and you will see that also the number in the title is automatically changed. We didn't say update the number, because that number is bind to the state, and since the state change, also the number three change and becomes two. And then we can do the same until we empty the table. And clearly if we refresh this, this will reappear. Because when we created the state, that is when we created the component, the default value is our fake exam array. So when the, the component is created, the entire app.js in this case, the state will always be initialized with the fake exam array when it's created. So when we refresh the page, we recreate everything from scratch and so everything reappears again. Okay? Okay. 
So we can have um, 50 minutes of break and then we can restart.